Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot with Vlogist Day. Who knows what? Uh, <laughs> I am a little mired in work at the moment, um, but actually that leads me to my vlogging topic. I was talking on Twitter earlier about placing my holiday order and Chris decided that that sounded like an interesting topic for a vlog because if you just buy games normally and you don't ever work at a game store, it's kind of weird to hear someone doing holiday orders in August, I'm sure. But once you think about it, it makes total sense because so let's say on an average day I buy one game, you know, I buy a game. And then on Black Friday, I buy 300 games. <laughs> the distribution that normally sends me my game is going to get clogged up. And the shipping department that normally ships my games will get clogged up. Our receiving part department on our side normally gets one game a day, gets three game, 300 games a day. So you really have to plan. Um, the way it works usually is to place an order that's like the total amount that you'd like and then you might get it in two chunks maybe three chunks so that's from Black Friday through January 15th and even though you don't like I'll put the order in in September you don't get anything till November but it's more so that everyone can talk about finances and all that stuff because it's extremely extremely expensive to go through Christmas and properly get stocked because board games are finicky. So one of the biggest things in board games is that um, the print runs are smaller than things like books or I guess it's similar to like independent books or independent music. It's not an Aaliyah CD but it is like the CD that you know the guy produces down the street and he only makes so many copies so board games are kind of like that because they're all small you know passion projects there's very little money in board games and people can talk about Klaus Teuber and all that stuff but there's the one in a million is the one that makes a, a good good amount of money off board games most people are happy to break even and not everyone does that. So you, you know a lot of publishers in this business are doing this as well as a day job. So when you talk about going in from ordering that one piece of something to ordering 300 pieces of that something, um, that can strain at every level and it also wipes out stock really, really fast. So if you and every other board game store are doing that big order and then in December you're like, oh, I forgot to order blah, 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 you're probably not gonna be able to get it in. Um, so how do I decide on these games? Well, a lot of them are super simple. Uh, the holidays, whether or not you celebrate, are way more focused on base games, well-known names, new titles, things that people splurge on around the holiday because people are more generous in that time. I mean, not, not everyone, some people are generous all the time, but during the holidays, people tend to do that little favor for themselves and for others a little more often. And when your great aunt goes into the board game store and says, I know, I know they play board games and they don't know what they're looking at. They want something that they could have maybe seen on tabletop or seen somewhere that they recognize, something that's familiar. Um, so you definitely go through more products that are well known than products that are a little more niche. Um, you sell, you sell some euros and stuff but in America during the holidays the games that very well sell are the bright colorful beautiful games the ones that were on tabletop the ones that have been around for 15 years so the Carcassons and the Ticket to Rides and the Settlers and what's kind of cool is a lot of the the new games that also fit in that category are like T Takenoko and Takedo and beautiful cool games with, with pedigree like nice designers and everything but they just have that appeal that you can just you can give that as a gift and feel really good about giving someone Takedo whereas if someone gives me Takedo instead of saying well that's not really to my taste I know that they went into the board game store and found something truly beautiful to hand to me and they spent money on something they know nothing about so I always I always find the selection people make to be kind of interesting you don't sell as many of the dry euros during that time. It's just, it's not as easy to hand someone. If you don't play board games, it's weird to hand someone a game about farming. 
it's it's hard to do um, so you kind of expect people to buy those games first the stocking stuffer priced games like the love letters and the star realms oh my goodness um, this year I'm also kind of uh, betting on tides of time to go into that too because it's also two player which this might be my board game store my meta if you will but two player games more than anything else are gifted a lot around where I work uh, people play a lot of two player games and they feel like they don't there aren't as many of them as other types of games which I don't agree with sorry everyone uh, I think they're the there are a ton of two-player games, but it's because people tend to game with their partner, game with the small crowd around them, game with their neighbor, and they have that one person that also enjoys board games. Not everyone is lucky enough to live in a big city with lots and lots of gamers. Seattle is very, very unique, and I still know people that live here that only play two-player games. So, uh, in my meta, two-player games are the thing are the thing. So uh, I have sold this year more patchwork than almost any other game. And it's, it's deserving of that. That's a fantastic game, but it's two players only, which really says something about what's going on with our customer base. So that tells me that maybe I should work on bright, recognizable two player, like a section. And if we put that together, things will sell. Um, then I think the most interesting thing to me and maybe to you, again, this vlog is making me super nervous because I didn't go to school for buying or anything. I'm using retail experience, ordering experience from restaurants, and knowledge of board games. That's what I'm running on in this life. Um, so for the upcoming season, the most interesting ones for me and the most heart-wrenching ones are games that are not out yet that will be out before Christmas. So the games I have pre-orders in for like Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born, Tides of Time, Mysterium, Code Names, the next printing of Spyfall, um, they're, they're a little harder to gauge. They haven't come out yet. So there's not going to be the kind of buzz behind them as there are behind something like Star Realms. Um, I think we're going to have Epic even shipping before Christmas comes out, maybe. And um, so you look at these games and you have to like, is, is this going to be able to sell itself? Because, you know, the Christmas times, the stores are crazy busy and people tend to shop by themselves a little bit more without as much sales help. And does this game sell itself? Does it have enough information on the cover and on the back? Does it have decent reviews that are easily Googleable from people's phones? Because people just walk around and Google things. That's great. Um, does it, is it pretty? Does it have a good price? Um, will they have heard of it? Did it get any buzz from Gen Con? Did it get buzz from whatever? But more so you're looking at the everyman, not the people that follow the Gen Con buzz and read up on Essen and read up on all these things. You want the person that just kind of games every once in a while that was looking for something fun to do with their family. And so picking those ponies is probably the most difficult part because they, they're not proven and it's way harder. And then I have to be really careful because especially around this time of year it's all the Essen releases and I personally like heavy Euros the most. And so any game that I'm super jazzed about, I have to be careful not to oversell that to my stores. It's never, you know, it, a big old heavy ugly Euro with like no buzz and no name and maybe no, nothing on the back like a slaughter game isn't going to do as well as like a Takanoko or a Takedo. So I have to always take those ones down a notch. Just <laughs> Take it from here to there. Um, something like the Gallerist, I have high hopes for, even though it's kind of on the heavier side. I mean, it's not the heaviest Vital by any means, but it's much heavier than your average game in a store. Um, it's just so beautiful and unique looking, and it's about art. And I think those things are appealing in general to people. So even with the high price point, I'm hoping that one is a decent hit. Um, it's never going to sell as well as the Star Realms, but I'm, 
I have hope for that one. Um, the one I'm really curious about, I did not order much of it because I'm a little scared that it's my bias. Uh, Fair, Favors of the Pharaoh, which is like the reimagining of To Court the King. Um, that is a game I'm so jazzed about. Like a medium weight dice game that I'm jazzed about is already kind of unique. And I'm so jazzed that I almost ordered a ton of it. And instead I knocked that down to a little more reasonable and um, I'm thinking it was just my personal excitement that was telling me to like order, order, order because uh, it's way harder to push down a game that you're excited about than it is to pull up a game that you're not excited about. Games that I'm not excited about, if I can see their val their validity, if I can play them and see who they're good for and that they're good well-made games that are pretty, that is much easier for me to order than to take down orders of games I enjoy personally. Um, that is why I use things like um, my network on Twitter and Facebook and everything. I'll, I'll ask some, some people sometimes if they've heard of a game and if they're excited about it because that'll tell me as long as they're not those people that buy every damn game, it'll tell me a lot of whether or not they've heard of it and if they're planning on getting it. So that, that tells me tons. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's my holiday process. Uh, I hope this was interesting. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.